Welcome back guys. Today I thought I'd review the process with you where you would create space on your Windows hard drive in order to be able to install Linux. This is useful if you want to have complete control over that uh, installation process. So we're going to take it step by step. We're in Windows. I'm in my Windows 7 install. Um, the first thing we're going to do is download a program called Gparted Live. Gparted is an Ubuntu based, it's known petition editor, and it's really the default petition editor within Linux. We're going to use that. I'm going to burn that to a, uh, to a USB, boot from it, and then we'll go through the petitioning process. So here's what we're going to do. I already downloaded the 64 bit. I have that on my desktop. I have my USB drive in my plugged into my computer. All I need to do is use a uh, program to burn that Gparted Live image to the to the USB thumb drive. And I'm going to use Win32 Disk Imager. It's pretty simple. I just opened it up. I'm going to select my image file. It's on my desktop. Gparted Live. Okay, so I'm going to open that. And then it's already found my USB drive, the G drive. So it looks like everything is ready to go. So I'm going to click on Write. It's uh, saying that it, the writing to a physical device can corrupt the device. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So now it's writing the image to my USB drive. Once that finishes, I'm going to uh, open up the, and it says write successful, so I'm going to exit. Now, I obviously can't boot into that and still show you the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it in a virtual box. I've already got it loaded and I'm going to show you what the program will look like once you boot from it. Now this is once you boot into Gparted Live this is what you'll see. And I'm going to just press enter to go into Gparted Live with default settings. Okay so you're gonna see this screen and in most cases you, you're going to select don't touch the key map. Now if you tab down to OK leave don't touch key map highlighted and press enter. Now now it's asking for a language. Now you can see number 33 is US English. That is the default. So since it's already on the screen pre-selected, then I'm just going to press enter. Now it's asking me which mode do I prefer and I'm going to take the default which is zero. Continue to start X to use Gparted automatically. So now Gparted is going to come up and as you can see this is a it's identical to Gparted used in Linux. Now I can't use this to bring up my Windows Drive because it's only going to reference my uh, virtual box drive. But the reason I did this is because so you can see how this process uh, develops. You can see how I got into uh, Gparted. I booted from the USB. I went through the selection process. <laughs> it's, and as I said before, this is the most difficult part of moving from Windows to Linux. Uh, petitioning can be a little scary. So I just want to show you that it's not as, as bad as it might seem. Once you boot into Gparted, this is what you'll see. Now, in order to continue to illustrate the process, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back 
when I'm in my Linux distribution, but I'll be using my gparted software within Linux so that you can see how I partition the Windows drive. I can't do it from this virtual box install. So I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys. Now I am back in my Linux desktop and I'm going to open up gparted and in the system category you will see gparted listed we're going to open that up now as you can see <clears throat> it looks identical to what you saw on that live USB so this is going to illustrate what the process would be if you were to create a petition uh, within your Windows install drive. If I can suggest that be very careful with this process, number one. Number two, it's not as difficult as it might seem. You just need to concentrate, make sure that you're making the right selections. And in this case, I know I don't want to touch my Mac OS Sierra drive, so I'm going to leave that alone. The next drive <clears throat> is my Linux drive. Right now I have Manjaro, I have uh, Feliz Arch, and I have some unallocated space, which is waiting for another <coughs> install. I'm not sure what I'm going to put there yet. My next drive is the D drive, and that's where Microsoft Windows resides. <coughs> now, as you can see, there are three petitions when you install Windows, Windows basically petitions the drive and installs what it needs. But this large window is my base, basically my uh, win, my operating system and my data drive. And so, in order to make room for Linux, that's the drive. That's the petition you would want to shrink. So I'm in my Microsoft Drive and I want to make room for Windows. Now, I'm sorry, for Linux. Now, Linux can use a variety of different file systems. I use ext4. I uh, played around a little bit with ButterFS. I didn't really care for it. Uh, at some point I may go back to it because ButterFS does have some features, snapshot features that I like, but um, I'm going to stick with ext4. Now <clears throat> I won't be able to actually resize it from within Linux because it won't give me that type of access to that drive. Okay, so these are the photos that I took of the actual process once I booted into the live USB. Okay, the first screen is the same as I showed you before. Don't touch the key map, uh, tab to OK, then press Enter. And then it'll ask you about language. It'll usually bring up your default. You'll just hit Enter. And then it'll ask which mode, and you'll see that the default is zero and you'll leave it there and just press enter and there's the Microsoft petition now that's it without any modifications if I highlight that and click on resize move you'll see the next so if I click on resize move it's going to open up this window. Then you'll just hover over the edge and resize it. And I'll I'll show you that um, if I look at this particular Linux petition, this one here. If I highlight that and click on resize, you see how it allows me to move it? And I can resize that. So I can create any size petition that I want out of this free space. 
once you get it where you want it then just click resize I'm not going to do that but that's what you would do and so as you can see it's the same in your live USB boot you will just slide this and I think I have a yeah you see how I slid it over and created the free space so I created a 50 um, gigabyte uh, free space so that that's where I would install my Linux operating system so you would if you wanted 50 you'd bring it to 50 free space and then click resize move and then once you do that you would click on apply this little check mark here you would click on apply and it would it would do its thing tell you when it's done and then you would uh, you would have a uh, petition a free space petition unallocated after your Windows petition Okay, so it would basically look like this over here. You would have an unallocated petition. So once you have the unallocated petition, what you will do is you will highlight it and then click New. And then you're going to create it as a primary petition EXT4. You can give it a name or a label just by typing in there. So let's say I wanted to uh, create a label, a petition, and I didn't want a name, but I would label it. And let's say I just, for the sake of argument, I label it Linux. Once you do that, it's going to change uh, the appearance. As you can see, it says new petition. At that point, you're going to click the arrow says are you sure you want to apply the pending operation click apply it's gonna go through and create that petition all operations were successfully completed close that out and then you will see it now has a device designation dev sdb4 that will be your Linux petition once you have that then you're going to boot into your Linux USB for the distribution that you want to install. And when it comes up time to select where it's going to ins be installed, you're going to, you're going to select something else. It's going to bring up a window similar to this, and you're going to select your SDB4. And that's going to be your root petition and your home petition it's a combination now the question is do you want a swap petition if you have eight gigabytes of RAM or more I would say you do not need a swap petition you would install Linux to SDB4 and that's all you would need so guys I hope that clarified the petitioning process if you have any questions post them in the comments and I'll try to answer them for you uh, but um, be, uh, between all the segments of this video between the virtual box the photographs and this illustration hopefully you have a good uh, a grasp uh, of the petitioning process and hopefully you have a little bit better understanding so thank you for stopping by the channel today. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.